And also, we want to talk about what am I doing today. So this is a somewhat completed version of what I'm doing today, right? So uh, when I talk about a cool tone rainbow, we are trying to show something that we're, we're living in these cooler tones and we're, we're using the cooler tones to create a fun rainbow effect. And I'm gonna do that, like I said, two different ways. So first we're gonna do a, a vertical rainbow and then we're gonna do a horizontal rainbow. Okay, so show you what I mean with that. Why am I doing it two different ways? How is that gonna represent differently on the hair? Again, we're gonna show all that. A um, few other things we're gonna do, talk about how to create a veil, right? So when I say a veil, I'm talking about something that's going to sit over the top and that's going to cover the, the rainbow effect that I'm creating, right? Because maybe I don't want it to be standing out, you know, front and center. As you can see here, you can, you can kind of see some of the other tones peeking through here, but overall on this, I went with like a nice cool kind of purple lavender hue with a little bit of silver lavender in there. But then if you were to lift this right here and you part that over, then you get to see the rainbow effect with some pink and some purple, some blue, some green, right? So again, staying on the cool side, even the pinks can be cool, right? And I'll show you how I created a pink, uh, a cool pink hue as well. But what's fun about this is depending on how you wear it, you can create different effects, right? So this is done vertically, which you could see here in these panels. But if I were to slice through and take this horizontally and maybe slight push this forward, it changes the way that the colors lay. So I can do something fun with the, with the placement of it for photos where maybe I do a really dramatic side part over here and then lay this over and across like that, right? So you can pull that rainbow across this way and then also you've got it kind of falling down that way. So that's what's fun about doing these. Uh, it's not necessarily something that you have to do like as an all over. You can even do this with, you know, just a blonde or any other natural color and just pop something like this underneath. So I'll talk about the block placement that I did there, how to make sure you're leaving out just enough to create a proper veil there. Um, and then that's gonna tie us into playing with the placement. Uh, we're also gonna talk about how to do it horizontally, which I'm gonna do in the fringe right here. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, again, creating like a double veil going underneath and over the top and having the rainbow just kind of peeking through the middle of it is gonna be really fun. And the last thing, we want to talk about our the best starting tones for these cooler color intensity shades right so this mannequin as you can see she's already been pre-toned she's been pre-treated i use defy damage pro series one defy damage pro series two uh, after the initial color application and now she's ready to go for the next application before starting this is how she looks it's still very light but you can see it's a little bit more on that yellow side. So what I wanted to do was cut through some of that yellow and cool it off. So to do that, I started with, uh, sorry, Blonde Life uh, Violet, per, Violet Shampoo. Uh, let that sit for a few minutes, rinsed it off, and then I toned it using the Demi Liquids in uh, 10SB and 10V with five volume. Let that sit for about five, 10 minutes and then rinsed it off and I was ready to go. Okay, so that's really important. That's your first step when you're talking about doing these blonde tones, uh, in, or I'm sorry, doing these cool tones, right? Now, depending on the amount of color deposit that you're trying to create, that's gonna dictate the level that you use. So maybe I went with a level 10, I wanted to keep it as light as possible. I like to stay in these lighter tones. I'll probably play with this as it is playing with the haircut and, and maybe a few different ways. And then I'll keep washing it and fading it and get it to go really nice and pastel. Even though this, I would consider like a slightly deeper pastel. So um, I wanted to keep it as light as possible for that. That's why I stuck with 10V and 10SB. But if you wanna go a little bit deeper, obviously tone down a little bit more. Or if your client has a more stubborn yellow Maybe you want to eliminate the SB and just focus on the V. Just do like a combination of 10V and 9V 
as your uh, as your toner option and that'll cut through that yellow and still cool it off just nicely to where you can then go on and put on your cooler tone intensities All right can you just repeat the toner formula as well as everyone who's logging on the formulas will be posted in the comments as well but if you can yes. repeat yeah so uh the the toner formula was 10 v 10 sb and the liquid demi so i'll show you really fast i'm just going to reach up here and grab them it was these two all right so 10 sb 10 v okay oh that was a little low <laughs> uh, and then obviously I, I went equal parts and um equal parts with five volume developer okay so that's our starting point now let's get some hands and some hair play with this a little bit and we'll show you a little bit more about this stuff now um i personally i love playing with with color intensities they can be somewhat labor intensive right when you're doing like this overhaul or, or something like this what's great about this particular uh demonstration is the mannequin already comes pre-blonded so i'm not having to do that work as well but um i did still put a little bit of work into it i actually did three quarters of it which you could see here so kind of getting all of this all the way around to here because most of it is just it's very repetitive and i don't think you need to see all of that right but I saved this section here in hopes that we could get through the entire application on this live because we know I'm notorious for not necessarily making it through all the way. So I think that this should be just enough to be able to get us there. And I left this specifically without doing the root, although typically before a live, I will do the root application um, for a specific reason. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what that is as we get started here. So I'm going to turn her this way to be easier for me to work. Is the lighting okay? If you guys see anything or that, you know, if the lighting's off in any way, or maybe you're having a hard time hearing me, please make sure that you let me know as well so that we can make the adjustments here. And if you have questions, don't hesitate. Make sure to ask away. Uh, love questions, love to engage and interact. So the more, the merrier. See what I did there? Because it's the holidays, it's the merrier. Just kidding. It's like like a dad joke I'll laugh. with my shirt i'll laugh at you all right p.s we have some of our joyco friends in here we've got kelly rachel brandon's in so oh wow, hey guys thanks for being with us yeah oh and a big happy birthday to our wonderful friend erica beckett i don't know if you're on watching or if you catch the replay happy birthday to you our friend uh erica is one of our managers and she's also very involved she does literally a little bit of everything with us so got to make sure that we shout it out when it when it's appropriate when the time comes okay so i've got her ready to go here are my colors you well no you can't you can kind of see yeah there we go so these are the colors that i created if you want the formulas for these we're going to post them in the in the chat but um you can always send me a DM as well uh, if you want the formulas for them. I'll, I'll make sure that I can send them over. Uh, if you don't already, you can follow me at Stylist Ricardo Santiago, and that would be where you could message me for the formulas. And if you want Ricardo's shirt, tough luck. It's one of a kind. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure you can get a Marshalls is where I got mine. <laughs> okay, so... When I'm doing the base application for this, I'm actually going to be working in vertical sections, whereas typically I would go through and I would either go with in horizontal sections, but I'm doing that for a reason, okay? Um, that reason being that because I am working, I'm going to be doing my color placement vertically as well. This is going to make it a lot easier when I'm going back through to not maybe pull that, that root formula too far or... or or accidentally, you know, it makes it harder to work through when you're trying to change the directions that you've already combed the hair. So I am purposely going at a vertical to make that easier for me. It's like these little simple things sometimes we don't think about that can make our jobs a lot easier. I'm just gonna clip this out of the way. All right. So for this part, I like to just stretch that, mm, anywhere from like a half an inch to an inch. And I always pull it a little bit lower towards the top just to make sure I get a nice kind of a gradient. So it's gonna have like a slight angle to it. 
if you can see here, right? Um, what that does is it works with the natural curve of the head uh, because obviously the higher points, so it'll look a little bit more symmetrical, but at the same time, I do want to create a deeper shadow at the top. So this is going to do that for me. If you happen to get a little bit of that color through the mids and ends, don't worry. It's not because of these shades that I'm using here, they're not too aggressive. Um, you can easily color over them if, you, if it happens to bleed. Now, if you were doing something with high contrast colors, like something really deep and something really light, then you want to be extra careful because the darker tones will easily bleed over and into the lighter tones. But because these aren't like, you know, too drastically different or contrasting, it works. It's pretty safe. Okay. And then once I have finished with this part of the application, I'm going to focus on this quadrant first and then I'll go and get into the fringe area which this part is pretty easy. The next part's a little bit more intricate and you need to have some specific tools in order, in my opinion, to execute it a little easier. All right. Does anyone have any fun plans or anything for the holidays? If you do, type that in there too. It's always fun to know. You know, I like to, I like to see what other people do at this time of year. We, we typically, we typically go on trips, you know, we've gone to New York quite a few times. We've done like little cabin getaways. Uh, we did New York and Boston a couple years ago. That was a lot of fun, but I like to see what people do at this time of the year. You know, hopefully you're not at home stressing out the whole time. <laughs> Although I feel like that happens to a lot of us, especially if you have kids. But, you know, don't want to forget, it's supposed to be a fun time of year. Anybody coloring their hair red and green? Yeah. <laughs> we do have a question from Andy. He sure. is asking, what is your favorite Joyco Intensity color and why? Oh, Andy. Coming out the gate with a heavy, heavy hitter question. Mm -hmm. uh, man. Oh, what what am I even like, questioning what for? Even what is the, the delay? Yellow. Yellow is my favorite color. <laughs> I don't even know why I was pausing on that. It's like, you know what it is? It's because I'm not using any directly right now. And so it was kind of out of sight, out of mind, although it was in my sight. But yeah, hands down yellow. Anyone who's worked with me at a hair show when I'm doing color intensities knows they know for a fact. First, the managers know, stock yellow. Make sure they have it there. Second, if anyone's working with me, they know I will find a way to sneak it in to a model's hair. Mm -hmm. It's one of those colors that not, well, very few people want until they see it, and then they're like, okay, it's cool, right? So, yeah, yellow, hands down. Good question. We have some answers coming in for your question about Christmas. So Tiff says that she's going to see Christmas lights around the city and having a hot chocolate bar for the kitties. Oh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Jason Randolph says, first time glamming for New Year's weekend. Oh. <laughs> Post a selfie. And Andy agrees with you. He says yellow is good to create highlights. Yes. His favorite is limelight. Yeah, yeah, limelight's lime, lime a, great, a great shade too. It's, it's so vibrant. That's what's great about it. Um, I have the green that I created here is actually a little doesn't have any limelight in it but i'm sure most people would look at it and assume that there was some but it was actually made using if you want like a really intense neon green take that limelight and put a pop of yellow in there and it'll it'll kick it up a notch and then this is the green ricardo made for today's class Yeah, so we actually have next year, I'm going to go ahead and mention it now before I forget, but next year, 2022, 
uh, I'm going to be doing a color master series with Joico. I'm really excited about it. I've been, uh, we've been planning this for, for quite some time and um, they gave me the perfect topic for, for me, <laughs> which is color intensity. So I'm gonna be doing a color intensity master class, which means we're gonna take you through every single part of what you need to know in order to become a master colorist with our color intensities. So I'll go over your, your starting bases, how to remove it, how to apply it, how to customize, you know, all the fun things that go into color intensity that for me make it so unique and so much fun to work with. I mean, this is really kind of where, where I got started with Joico. I would say is I was one of the few people that was playing with this in the in the early going and it helped to uh, between that and and really social media helped to kind of give me a push in order to move in the right direction to get me where I am now. Okay, so now that I've got that base formula on there, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn her a little bit. Hopefully this doesn't obstruct your view at all, but I'm gonna turn her a little bit and I'm gonna take a horizontal slice right here. And we're just gonna move that out of the way. The good thing, uh, what I like doing this and working within these sections, um, especially after just putting that base on, is now that I have that, I can manipulate the hair a little bit easier. So I can just move it out of the way without having to clip it or do anything like that. Tiff is asking, does it stain the scalp? It depends on the color that you're using. Okay, so, and how fast you are at taking it off. <laughs> so, uh, you can see here, it's been sitting on there for a second. I just put that, that one on there, but this isn't a really strong base color. Now, if I was going straight on with, let's say like an amethyst or an indigo or, you know, any of the colors that are made to deposit on like say level seven and lower or level eight and lower like passion berry will do the same thing magenta those are probably going to stain pretty quick but if you go on and wipe them off they'll tell you what's great about our color intensities is if you look right on the bottle it actually tells you what the start what the level should be at minimum for you to be able to to use these colors so i love that because sometimes you know you're a little confused, you don't know exactly which one to go with, but if you can look at the hair and you can identify what your starting level is for your client, then you can more accurately determine what shades to use to create the, the effect that you want. We have another question. Andy is asking, do you like applying color on damp hair as well as dry hair? Yes, Andy, the answer is yes. Um, so. I always recommend, I mean, so with color intensities, truly your best deposit and your most consistent deposit is going to come on dry hair. If you, if the hair is wet, it's, you are going to sacrifice some of that deposit and you're not going to really know exactly how your color is going to turn out. I personally, and this is just me, it's my preference. It's not necessarily how we, how we say or do things, but I like the hair to be like, 80 to 90 percent dry i wanted to have just a touch of dampness in there it deposits really well for me but it also uh gives me a nice little slip right so i'm able to manipulate that color a little bit better now you see what i just did here right so i just melted these colors together again they're so similar that it's very easy to melt and transition that but i want to make sure that i'm being mindful of how much I'm working that color, especially with these lighter shades. If I go in and I just keep working this and trying to see if I'm getting good saturation without first adding more color to then help me out, what can happen, especially with these lighter shades, is you can actually overwork that color and push the pigment back out, right? So you actually lose some of that deposit that you could create. Um, we've done lots of classes and and, uh, events and stuff using these and and I, I've had that question come up a few times where someone's like you know I put the color in and then I finished and I, I had really good saturation and then when I went to rinse it 
it was like it was gone. And it, most of the time it's because they were so focused on that saturation, which is really important, uh, but they tend to overwork. And if you overwork it, you end up spreading it out too much and you lose it, right? So you lose that deposit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, gonna, I'm melting into, like I said, this lighter lavender shade. And I'm gonna take a couple of horizontal sections here. And wherever I feel like I need to, I'm gonna go back in with my base formula and maybe stretch it just a little bit more. Right, I wanna make sure, again, because they're so similar that I've got a good amount there and the lighter shade doesn't just overtake it and I barely see anything at that root. And then also when applying, you'll see too, I like to, I'll put my color down and then I immediately switch from a vertical to a side to side application. So the reason for that, is that it opens that section up, opens up the hair, allows me to really see where my deposit is. Like right here, there's a little spot, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm able to get that. Same thing along this entire top section. I don't wanna see any spots, any holidays. And I'm gently moving it around, right? I'm not overworking it. Just letting the brush kind of spread the hair around and move the color, make sure that I can see it everywhere and I don't see any of that blonde poking back through. Okay, and then once that's done, I'll just kind of work it through the rest of the way. And that's good. I think I'm gonna do one more really small one just to try to make sure that my lines are about the same on both sides. Actually, no, I'm pretty sure that's about where I was on the other side. Okay, so actually I'm gonna stop right there, okay? And I'm gonna switch directions. Always make sure you have like a damp towel available too, because you have to do a lot of hand wiping just to make sure you're not transferring the colors everywhere. We have another question. Okay. Tip mm -hmm. is asking, would you apply the same way for tight curly hair? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to, uh, I was once taught from, from someone um, at, a, at a training, they, they were referencing hair as, as fabric, right? And I thought that that was really cool to look at it from that perspective um, because, you know, tailors learn to manipulate different kinds of fabric much the same way that we learn to manipulate different textures of hair. But at the end of the day, the hair's still hair. So it's just learning to kind of work with a different kind of texture or fabric. But in this case, the way that you would go in and apply uh, is no different from one to the other, okay? One thing that I would do, uh, actually for tighter, curlier hair, I, I will actually say it's, it's probably easier to apply on because the hair tends to collapse a little easier. So you can really kind of saturate much quicker than you typically would with uh, fine straight hair, which really sits on top of each other and makes it hard to separate sometimes. Okay, drop that down a little bit. Okay, so here's where we're switching to our verticals, okay? So I started on the other side. I did almost like an order of going from the cooler to the warmer. Uh, I did green, then blue, then uh, purple and then pink. You know, technically blue would be cooler than green, but because I was going to purple next, I wanted to go work my way around the color wheel in that direction. So I kind of went like, like this, right? Instead of going like that. And just really quick, welcome Lorraine and to anyone else who's joining late, that is quite all right. You are able to check the formulas in the previous comments. They will also be shared with the post. Also a reminder, if you think somebody would benefit from this class, please share it. And you can also save it for later to rewatch as well. Yes. And it's gonna live on the page for a while. So, you know, if you miss it, you always have a chance to go back and watch it again later. Okay, so probably my favorite of all the colors that I created today, this green, love it, right? 
So I'm taking a vertical section here and I'm gonna try to keep these as uniform as possible. Slightly wider at the top, going to slightly more narrow towards the bottom because it's wider section up here and a more narrow section down here. So I'm just kind of mirroring the head shape, right? And working with that to make sure I can keep them as uh, uniform as possible. I also clearly mixed way too much of this color. So I have plenty of this left over. Well, that's a good point too, because if you over mix, you can also save that color. Yep, so these don't go bad, you guys. They do not mix with developers and they do not go bad. Put them in an airtight container and you can keep them and use them later. So if anyone's feeling a little crazy and wants to come down to Orlando and get their hair colored this color, you let me know. <laughs> I will do it. Okay, so at this point, I wanna just make sure that I'm working those colors in together really well. I wanna have a pretty good transition. Uh, right now, I can actually see, so obviously it's a little bit more deposit right at the root, and then it kind of softens out, and I can see the way the green's kind of going in and breaking that up. So typically, I would reapply the purple and stretch that a little bit more, but because that green is actually going in above my purple line a little bit, when that's dry, it's actually gonna create almost like a almost like a highlight to the root effect uh, right off that purple so in that case I'm actually not going to because it doesn't need it when I used to do a lot of these colors back in the day I mean way back in the day I would overcomplicate the crap out of them and I would spend a significant amount of time just trying to create these over the top intricate color patterns. And what I found at the end of the day was that no one cared, right? <laughs> Cause you couldn't see all of it all the time. And that's when I think it was, um, I was doing an event with a friend of mine that she's like, oh no, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do like a little panel underneath or I'm gonna do it up towards the top because but everything else, I'll just do like one color. And I'm like, why haven't I been doing that? Because <laughs> you only, you can make it the focus where you want to make the focus. But if you rainbowed out the whole head, I mean, really everything underneath, unless, or even in the middle, there's no way everyone's going to see all that detail throughout the entire thing. So save yourself a little bit of time, save yourself a little effort, and be intentional about where exactly you are placing the colors in order to get the desired pop that you want. That's why I'm doing it right here on both sides. So it, it'll create a really nice pop, but it'll also blend really nicely. And if she ever decided to not wear her hair in the center, which Lord forbid these days, you don't wear your hair in the center, um, she would have a really cool effect, right? Because the rainbow would completely cover and lay over on the, onto either side, depending on which side she were to part it to. Trick question for you, since you're an expert with intensities, are there any colors that you would say don't melt well together in the collection? Well, yeah, anything that's a, that's a canceling color. Right, so if you're if you're going across the color wheel, don't mix those two together because they're probably just going to neutralize, and you'll end up with some shade of brown or something else along those lines. Mm -hmm. So, I think one of the trickiest colors that I ever did was way back when I did Angela's hair purple and yellow, and that was that was a challenge because purple and yellow don't usually melt well together. So, I had to get. I had to get creative with it, but it turned out really cool. If you shift the tones just slightly, you can get them to melt. So that's another fun little secret. Okay, so this one's going to be purple. And you can see how simple this is, but did you see on the other side the effect that we can create? So once I finish with this one, I'll show you really quick again on the other side, especially for anyone who just tuned in and they're wondering what the heck is going on. Uh, I'll show you what's happening on the other side so you can see 
exactly how this is going to end up looking. And you can be like, you know, have that light bulb moment. You're like, oh, okay. I see what you're doing there. And you see also what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm melting these quick, easy, not overcomplicating this. And then I'm laying that straight down. No need for foils or mesh or anything else. I'm not worried about the, uh, the colors transferring or anything like that. It's for the most part, when you're working with these lighter shades, if you're consistent with these lighter shades, you don't have to worry about bleeding. Right? But if you're, if I was working with like red at the base, yellow through the ends, trying to create that, you know, really cool, like fiery looking melt. Um, and I were to just stretch one section with red, just to create a nice little pop. Right. And then I laid that down over that yellow that for sure is going to transfer. So again, be mindful of which ones you are allowing to lay over to create those effects. Now the last one, the pink. And this pink I like a lot, right? Because I feel like it's a cooler tone pink versus the warmer, brighter pinks. I actually muted it out a little bit. So for this one, I started with a base of rose and then I added some mauve armor and a little bit of pewter. Did you mean mauve amour? Oh, damn it. He said Amour. Armor. I said armor. It's amour. Sorry. Mav amour. Like I love mav. <laughs> Mi amour. Well. Just in case that's people. Gonna, that's going to be on there forever. <laughs> just in case they went to look for mav armor. I'm sorry. If you don't see that at the store, that's why I just made it up. <laughs> sorry, Larissa. I messed up your color name. <laughs> it was more so me asking for myself. No, nope. no, nope, that's accurate. That's accurate, and mine was not. And then sometimes you rip a hole in your glove and you need to go get another one. Oh boy. It's a good thing this is the last live of the year for me, huh? <laughs> oh boy. Sorry, everyone. Just kidding. Hey, this is a good time. We're having a good time Michelle over here. Michelle says, don't worry, it just makes you real. You're not perfect. <laughs> I genuinely wasn't trying to correct. By no I was means. like, did we release a new color? And By I didn't no know. <laughs> Maybe I just feel like I should have been named Armor. <laughs> it's a more it's easier for me to say. <laughs> I'm going to find an excuse that makes sense. <laughs> hey, can you just share what your formula was to cool down that, that pretty pink color? Yeah, to make my mob a more. <laughs> Redemption. So it was, uh, we started with Rose. Actually, no. I started with clear, and then I added rose. Uh, there, right there. Uh, and, then I, and then I added rose primarily, and then a touch of the mava more and pewter in order to cool it off. I gotta dry my hand off, or else it, the glove won't go on. Mm -hmm. So there's mob amour. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it, it really, at the end of it, it just turns into this really nice soft pink. And it's also doing, it's, it's cooling it off a little bit extra because we're starting with that cooler base. Are people laughing at me? She's laughing at me, so I feel like you guys are laughing at me. You gotta have fun. Michelle says she can never spell it, so see, it's not just you. Good. Mm -hmm. I, apparently I could never read it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Appreciate you trying to help out. Or say it. Yep. <laughs> okay. But here, oh, sorry, I did say, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna paint this really fast. I'm gonna paint this really fast and I'm gonna show you the other side before we get into the fringe. The fringe is not gonna take very long, but it will take longer than the other part because it's a little more intricate, okay? Again, we're gonna veil it. We're gonna do a top and a bottom and then we're gonna create the rainbow. Now, what's cool about when you're changing your placement and you're changing your direction is you can create completely different looks, right? So if I wanted to, just by just by playing with your over direction, if I wanted to maybe create a really like shattered out line, then all I would have to do is create, do something horizontal and then cut through it diagonally. And it breaks up that line to where it looks very holographic, the way the colors kind of fall into each other. Uh, same thing applies 
with a vertical to a diagonal or a vertical to a horizontal, you can create like these really bold points or you can really soften them out depending on the angle that you take when you cut back through them. So I always recommend just have a little bit of fun with the placement. Uh, but again, I'm gonna show you in just a second how to create some really nice hard lines that you can shatter out afterwards and have some fun with. Unfortunately, you won't be seeing the after, like the full afters for this today because by the time we're done with the live, I'm basically out of sunlight. So we'll be posting these probably tomorrow. So check back on social media channels on Stylish Ricardo Santiago. We'll make sure that we put that there on our on the stories. And then also check out Joyco uh, on their Instagram. And I'm pretty sure we'll have those on there as well. Okay. So there, this quadrant is done. Okay, and you can see how it lays. It's actually kind of fun. I always kind of, I always like to lay the veil back a little bit just to see my colors popping underneath. That's, that's more so just for effect. And for those who are new to Joyco Intensity, how long will that color have to process for and how would you wash it out? Yeah, so you can let this, you can let this sit for about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, and then your washing procedures is really just gonna be rinse, 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 rinse on cool to cold water. Um, and then afterwards, I would go in and seal it with Pro Series 2. Again, treated it first with Pro Series 1. I'm gonna seal it down with Pro Series 2. That's Defy Damage. That's, this one's Pro Series 2, okay? In case you haven't tried that before. If you haven't, it's the season, go get it. Okay, here's the other side. So all you can see we have left here is the fringe. So here's the other side though for those, those who have just recently joined. Uh, and you can see the way that the veil kind of sits over. And if I were to go through and comb this to where it sits flat, I could essentially cover most of that with the exception of just the ends that you can see a little bit of that color. But then if I went through and just kind of took a slice in any direction, I could really open that up and change the way the color falls. Right, so I can open them up a little bit more. Or, like I said before, you can move it all over to the side and just kind of show it off completely. So this is a lot of fun too, right? If you're gonna do maybe like some little some little top knots or like a rope braid going back or any kind of waterfall braids. It's a lot of fun to let these colors all play together um, when you've done that kind of placement. And again, super simple, quick, easy. It's not overly complicated. And if you wanted to, it's a great way if you wanted to just, you know, do like some peekaboos or something, you just block color, block lighten that have the rest of the color be natural and then do that underneath, okay? Yeah, I'm just taking advantage of the fact that she's all blonde and having some fun with it. Okay, so now for this part here, what I'm gonna do is start on the bottom. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna probably have enough time to get a few slices of this in. So let's see. I'm gonna paint the forehead because I can just go back in and wipe it. And I also strategically chose this as my base color. I like to do a purple base because purple melts into almost everything except for yellow. But I can make adjustments with my yellow or with my purple to get, get them to melt. So that's why I like to do that. Um, it can melt easily into most of the colors without dominating or overtaking them or changing them in any way. So purple is just kind of like that, that nice go-to for a base formula. Some shade of purple. I think I said before, this one is a combination of the True Lav, a drop of indigo, and a little bit of pewter.
Okay, so I get the base on there. Again, stretching it about the same as I did the rest of the, the rest of the way through. And if this were a client, I would probably just for that that bottom portion, I would drop a foil or something or a mesh or something underneath there just to keep the color from sticking to their face, especially for the next part. You know, just try always trying to stay clean. I feel like the cleaner we work, the cleaner our result our results are. Some little extra about keeping clean there. Thank you. So what I want to focus on is right in the middle. So I, first thing is when it's dry, I like to look and see exactly where my coverage is, right? And what I find is usually this whole top, maybe half through here will fall and cover most everything. Okay, so that I'm going to section away. Would you recommend doing the haircut first before Absolutely. doing Absolutely. Yeah, always do the haircut first. Yeah, if not, you're gonna waste a lot of color, a lot of time, a lot of effort, sacrifice your placement. You could end up cutting out a color completely. Done that plenty of times. I speak from experience, you know. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is also just take, so what I wanna do is find, see my widest points right here, right? Basically from the recession to the recession. I'm gonna go just below that, just below and section that out. So there's my double veil. So my rainbow is gonna sit right in between the, the base of it and the top veil of it. So I'm gonna section that off to the side there. This one I can go ahead and melt. Everyone doing all right so far? We're all following along, no questions. And if you like what you're seeing, please make sure you show some love, leave a comment. Encourage Ricardo, because he need, everybody needs encouragement. Especially me. <laughs> okay. So then we'll give this a quick little wipe again, just avoiding any staining there on the face. And this is where I would take something and just lay it right there. So I'm actually going to use a clear film, maybe. So that way it's not like I'm completely blinding my client. They can see a little bit through there. See? Just drop it right in the middle of their face. Keep the, keep the eyes in view. Right? So they can see out through there, but, you know. Now... For the next part, I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to grab a mesh. And what's great about the mesh is it's going to give me a little bit more of a, uh, like a firm base to work on. So I'll lay that here straight across and now they're blind again. That's all right. We're going to grab the comb and you want to work in some smaller sections here with this. Okay, so we're going to go Here, this is probably just going to be about two slices, but that's all it, that's all it really needs. Here's one. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did before, except I'm going to work my way down versus across. Okay, so we're going to lay this nice and flat. Here I already have my purple line. So from the purple... go into green. So once I go in like that, then I go ahead and put a little bit of pressure down and I'm going to switch and go vertically. Or I'm sorry, yeah. But I'm going to work up versus down. The reason for that is it keeps you from pulling too many of those hairs out. So there's one color. And go with the blue can get the line in there and then switch go up
This is also good to make sure you have a slightly more firm brush. Then the purple. You may need to put your hand underneath just to get better support there, right? Because if you don't have enough, then you're not going to be able to press that color through and get good saturation. And then finally, the pink through the ends. I like to just go ahead and get that all the way through. Anytime I'm using color intensity, I always feel a little bit, especially if I'm doing a class and I'm explaining through it, I always feel a little bit like Bob Ross. And I feel like my shirt today says so. Bob Ross would definitely say stage fly. He would approve. All right, so there's that. And then what I do is go right on top with only one of those, don't need two, right over the top with the clear film. And what that does is it lets me work the next section down and get the placement exactly the same. We have a question coming in from Michelle. She asks, how do the dark colors not melt with the bright ones when you rinse? because they aren't that much darker, right? Now, if, I, if this was, again, if this was that high contrast that I was referencing before, you really do have to be pretty careful about that. It will easily overtake um, and bleed straight through. But when you're working like this and they're, all the colors are pretty light like this, it's not really a concern. They don't melt too much together. Um, actually, for me, they don't melt at all together. And if you're rinsing cool enough, you're fine. So just make sure that water is really nice and cold and move fast. Okay, so move the hair around, work it through, get through the colors. Uh, if you're concerned, you can always lift the ends out first, rinsing the base, or I'm sorry, yeah, rinse the base, and then go back through and rinse the ends. So that's probably the best way if you're going to do it in a high contrast fashion to make sure that you don't run into that issue. You see how that clear film lets me see my lines? I could just match them right up. Super easy. A bit of the purple here. This like a softer bristle brush. That's why I was making that mention earlier. So I do have to make sure that I have my hand underneath to press back against it so that I get good saturation. And lastly, the pink. Oh, a little extra there. Okay, and then if you ever have any kind of concerns, like as the color's moving around, I felt like I saw a little bit of blonde, I just go back through, touch it up really fast. Once it's pretty well set, don't be afraid to move a little bit side to side with it. Your lines will still be there. And then you can put a happy little tree over here on the side if you want. Then I'm going to cover that once more. And the last but not least, little top section. So this is our top veil, right? 
Now this, when it falls, is gonna sit more or less like this, kind of fans out, and we'll see some of that rainbow peeking out through the corners on the outside, which is really nice. Um, if she, since this is more of a curtain style bang, she were to wear it off to the side, then you have the rainbow that kind of cuts through and you really only see the effect through the, the bottom end as it, as it cuts over this side. Um, or same thing going this way, but in the middle, you can really kind of open that up a little bit and you can see the way the rainbow is gonna sit through and pop out. Michelle asks, can you please impersonate Bob Ross at our next training? <laughs> Don't give him the license. Yep. Yep, that's happening. Oh no. He might have a wig. If I have color something. intensity classes to teach at our next training, that's you can rest assured that I'm gonna create an alter ego for that. <laughs> Okay, and then that is that, All right? So that's essentially it. I mean, uh, I tried to give the client a little vision, but then I took it away. But now it's nice because I can just take this and flip it straight back like that. It stays out of the way, nice and easy. You can even still see the rainbow colors poking through underneath there. So that's my take on a cool tone rainbow, right? So playing with these cooler tones, making sure first, you know, as a recap, that we are pre-toning our, our clients or mannequins, whatever it is that you're working on, pre-tone them first. Make sure that you have a cool base to start with. Could you do it on a slightly warmer base? Yeah, but your colors aren't gonna look the same, right? You're not gonna have that nice icy cool effect. Um, and what you'll find though, is if you were to tweak slightly, you know, maybe if you were working on the warmer side of the family, don't, don't, you don't necessarily have to tone there because if you want something to be a little brighter, then that is going to make it pop a little bit more having that yellow base uh, to start with. So there's that um, on that side of it. Uh, next, make sure that you're formulating in order to create a nice cool palette like we did today, using the right kind of colors to mix in, whether you are using um, your blues, your purples, your your uh, your silvers, right? So the silvers are great additives to, to mix into there and to really cool off those shades um, and even mute them out a little bit if you wanted to, like I did with the pink, right? So it wasn't so vibrant. It ends up being nice and soft like we have right there, right? So when this is done, I'm gonna let this process, like I said before, about 20 to 25 minutes uh, after that be a nice cool rinse. And uh, I'm gonna go through, refine the haircut a little bit, see if there's anything else that I need to tweak, and then we'll style it out and um, have it ready to go as soon as we have some good sunlight again to get some pictures. But uh, does anyone have any questions before we wrap up here? I'll give it a second. If not, cool. I just wanna say, uh, Again, thank you to everyone uh, for tuning in today, especially a big thank you for the whole year, right? For 2021, for all the engagement that we've had throughout the year. I'm grateful and, and very blessed to have been able to do this with all of you um, all year long. And it's been, a, it's been a privilege and honor of mine. Uh, I really hope that everyone continues on into 2022, bigger, better, uh, growing and continuing to stay hungry and get the education. Uh, I know I am, and I hope the same for all of you as well. So uh, that's really it. I hope that you all have a great uh, holiday season. Um, enjoy the rest of the year uh, while you have it, and blessings into the new year. And yeah, that's it. So thank you. Y'all have a great rest of your week.